Hello, and welcome to another episode of I Demand a Homestead. My name is Amanda, and today what we're going to be talking about is how to extract honey from um, the comb of your your worry hive, your top bar hive. Okay, so um, if you've seen my previous videos on the worry hive, you know that this is a different kind of hive in that it doesn't have full frames, it only has top bars. So when you pull this out, you just have the top bar. I'll bring it nice and close so you can see. Okay, and that's it. And that's how they kind of construct it. Okay, so the way that you extract honey from this hive is completely different than how you would do it from a Langstroth hive. All right, so we're going to show you how we do that today. And we're going to use a couple of different tools for that. One will be your regular hive tool in order to get pry these frames out. But the other thing that we use, we also use something called a worry hive tool, okay? Which is this long, it's a long metal. <laughs> My son just runs by. <laughs> and it also has this blade, which we actually will use to cut the, um, the frames away from the box here, which I'll show you how to do, all right? So we're gonna turn this comb honey, or this comb into beautiful jars of raw honey. All right, let's see how we do it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hive tool here, okay? Uh, I'm sorry, my uh, worry hive tool, and I'm going to take it and I'm going to stick it down between the first box and the frames all the way to the bottom, okay? So that one is all the way to the bottom. And then what I do is I'm going to turn, I might lift the box up a little bit to make sure I'm all the way to the bottom, and then I turn it 90 degrees, okay? And then you try and keep it as close to the box as possible and you pull straight up. And that severs any comb that's attaching it to the wall of the box. And then I turn it 90 degrees again, keeping it as close to the wall as possible, I pull it out. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. Keeping it nice and close to the box, I'm going to pull it straight up. There we go. And we bring it straight back down, turn it 90 degrees, and bring it back up. All right. Now. Then we're gonna use our hive tool to pry the bar out, okay? So I'm gonna kind of just, ha ha ha. <laughs> and that one broke right off. Okay, so as anyone who's ever filmed YouTube videos will tell you that when something can go wrong while you're filming it absolutely will. So that first one did not come out at all very well and it broke off the top bar. So we're gonna take out this one and show you how to do that. But that is what happens sometimes with these because it was stuck to the second one, which I've also pulled out because I damaged it a lot. So let's see if we can make this one look perfect for you. Okay, and maybe actually now you're going to be able to see this better. So I'm going to take this hive tool. The first one is always the hardest one to, to kind of get out. And again, I bring it 90 degrees and I pull it up. And this time I can actually see where the comb is, which is cool. And same thing on this side. Once you get the first one, as I said, it's easier. Just make sure I've got it. There we go. Okay. And then now I'm going to use the other side of my hive tool and pry it out like this. So I just kind of get underneath the frame and pop it out. She hopes. Oh, good. Okay. A lot more delicate than the frames would be of a Langstroth hive. So then we pull that one out. Ooh, pretty. Okay. We're going to put it down on our cutting board. Okay, so this is where you're going to, so you've got your beautiful piece of honeycomb here and it looks gorgeous. This is all fairly light wax, so I don't think they use this for brood comb. So this is just kind of first, first generation honey, which is great on the comb. Um, what you'll need now is some kind of a bowl to collect the honey as it drips down. And then some kind of a colander, okay? This one is clearly just for honey. Uh, because the wax gets all over it, so that's what I use it for only. So I sit them together like so, okay, so that that way it will drip down in. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of cut a portion of this off. I'm probably just going to cut half, actually, just with a big chef's knife. Okay, there we go. And then I'm going to take this other portion away for now, and we'll cut up this one. Now I've seen people do this where they kind of cut it into like a, or they mash it almost into like a slurry. I don't do that just because I like my honey to be a little bit more clear. 
Okay, so here's a piece that I can kind of handle. And then what I do, and this is where it gets messy, is I just cut it into thin kind of slices. Very sticky though. And you only want to kind of like um, harvest the comb where you can see that it's at least 80% capped honey, okay? Because if it's uncapped honey, you can have too much um, moisture in there and then your honey can go bad, okay? We don't want that. You want your honey to be safe, especially if you're not going to pasteurize it. And then I just turn it all, and you could turn the cutting board, which is what I normally do, but for the camera's sake, okay? I turn it 90 degrees and then just chop it finely the other way. I'm trying to kind of break every cell so that that way it'll drip the honey out. All right, then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick it up with my knife and I'm gonna transfer it to this bowl. You could, you could use a bucket underneath this if you had and like a bigger kind of system. Some people I've seen um, will have like a big fermenting bucket and then they just kind of like punch a hole in the bottom of it to let the honey drain out. Um, if you were doing a lot, you could definitely do it that way. I don't, I usually only harvest one box at a time, so I find that this method is sufficient for me, but yeah. And we'll take the rest of that bar and I'm gonna cut it just below kind of where the bar is. Put the bar away for now. And then do the same thing. So because this comb has never been used um, to, to rear brood in, you could actually um, cut this and, and sell it as comb honey, which people really, really like. Okay, Ooh, this one broke a little bit, but anyway, you can see how pretty that is, right? Um, you can package it just like that, or sometimes what people will do is they'll cut it, cut chunks of this and put it into a jar of honey. So there's beautiful chunks of this honeycomb in there, just because it's gorgeous. Okay, once we're done that, I go back to the bar here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run my knife along the diagonal here. Just to shave off. home. Okay, just like that. And so then what I'll do is I'll actually kind of um, put this into like a sink full of water so that the honey can actually dissolve off of this. But I'll leave this remaining wax on because it kind of acts like a little bit of a blueprint for the bees. Next time I want to use this bar, kind of tells them exactly where to start building. Encourages them to build their comb kind of straight off the bars instead of on angles and things. All right, so we'll take that one away. So you can see that there is already honey dripping very steadily outside of this. I'm going to cut up another bar and probably two bars because this is really full of honey, these ones, is gonna be enough to fill this up. So we'll let it drain for about 12 hours or until the container kind of gets too full at the bottom, all right, the bowl. So it might be a little bit sooner than that depending on how full your comb is of honey. And then we'll show you what to do from there. Okay, so it's actually probably only been about three hours since I did this. And you can see this bowl is pretty darn full of honey. So what I'm going to do then is I've got a little bit of honey I've already kind of rendered out. And I've got it in a pot. And you'll see why. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour this honey into the pot. And I'll just use my little bowl scraper just to make sure I get all of it. Oh, we're pretty close to the top of that pot already. And the colander back on top of this bowl. Okay. Right there. And I'll leave it probably until it's like about 5 p.m. now. I'll leave this probably until tomorrow morning. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a stir just because there's still kind of wax that's trapped in here, or rather honey that's trapped in here that can't kind of drain down. And so by stirring it, then I let it kind of um, drain for another 12 hours, then I'll stir it again. And by then, 12 hours after that, we should have gotten pretty much all the honey that we're gonna get out of this. Okay, here is our pot full of honey. And uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on the stove and I'm gonna turn it on to low, okay, medium low. 
reason I'm doing that, I'm not pasteurizing this because I want raw honey with all the enzymes and everything, but I want to just um, heat it up enough that it's less viscous, more liquid, and I can filter it more easily. So you can see right now, it's pretty thick, okay? So we'll come back in a few minutes. Okay, so it's been a few minutes now, and I'll show you kind of what the thickness of this is. Okay, and you can see it's an awful lot more runny, all right? And that is exactly how I want it. So here is my setup. Um, again, it's very, very simple. So what I'm gonna use to filter it is this, just this little kind of uh, mesh strainer. I'm only gonna filter it once uh, because it doesn't bother me if it's got a few little wax particles and things like that in there and pollen particles. If you are planning on selling your honey or you want it to be more clear, you could filter it a couple of times um, or you could put it through a couple layers of cheesecloth, whatever you want. And then I've just got a sterilized one liter mason jar. Um, you could use honey jars as well. That would work perfectly. Into our pot, or rather into our jar, taking our time so that it doesn't overrun the sides. So this is what um, the amount of honey that we got from our two bars from our Warre Hive. Um, so it is, and it's still a little bit liquidy in there, it's gonna kind of firm up a bit more. So this is two and a half liters, okay? So um, in pounds that works to be rare. So each is about three pounds, so three, six, seven and a half, almost eight pounds of honey, okay? So roughly four pounds of honey per bar, if it's a full bar, is what you're expecting to get. Okay, so that's pretty darn good. So what we have left over is this sticky kind of mess of wax, okay? And it's hard to see, but there's still quite a bit of honey. Well, not a, not a lot, but there's definitely still honey in here that we couldn't get out. So you have a couple of options. Um, if you want to find a use for that honey that's still in there. You can, if you have bees that you're feeding right now, you can uh, put this in a bucket and just cover it with water um, or, or just under cover it with water and stir it up every few hours so that honey will dissolve. And then what you can do is you can either one, use that to um, feed a sugar syrup to your bees, or what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it into mead. So um, if that's something that you guys are interested in, you wanna see how I kind of turn this stuff into mead, let me know in the, po in the comments section and I will make a video about it, all right? But that's what I'm planning on doing with this. So thank you for joining me on another episode of I Demand a Homestead, where we made some beautiful, wonderful raw honey from our own Warre Hive. So um, if you like this video, please feel free to press the subscribe button as well as the notification bell. So that way you'll always know when I post another video. Um, if you have any thoughts about this video, please feel free to post them in the comment section and we'll see you guys soon. All right, bye-bye.